So let me give you an update because actually what happened next and what I wanted to happen next after where I left you last time is not necessarily the same thing. So the, the meeting that I had with the property manager was then late, he didn't turn up until 20 past one. So I went to uh, try and plug in all of my Roku boxes and get them set up only to find that I had one TV broken. So I was kind of running around thinking, how do I get this TV to work? Can I do it? Can I change the fuse? Do I need to change the plug socket? Um, long and short of it is that I got so stressed out by doing that, that by 20 past one, when the property manager <laughs> arrived, I was like, oh, hi, Richard. I am super frazzled right now because I've been trying to do all of this. Um, so the good news about Roku boxes and the reason that I picked a Roku box to use in my service accommodation is because they are so simple to set up. Literally took about five minutes. It's all the typing in passwords and things for all of the different providers, which I find the most annoying and the most frustrating. But actually, um, if unlike me, you were to sit there with just that going on, I think you could probably do it in about 15 minutes. I just had not left myself enough time. Anyway, next up, I had the meeting with the property manager and we went through the service charge and the service charge budgets and what was going on there and whether I was happy with it. And actually, I've always been happy with it in that particular building. Uh, I worked hard with the previous managing agents to get the service charge costs down as low as I possibly can. It works out at roughly £55 per month, which I am perfectly happy with. There's a ground rent on that building as well of around about... Um, actually, it's not a roundabout, it's £20 per month. So £20 per month, £20 per year, paid every uh, half a year, £10 every half a year. So I am perfectly happy, but I did know that there would be a reason that he would come and see me, and it's because they want to do an externals project. Now, the roof on that particular property was done seven years ago, so I said to him, you do not need to get... Uh, the scaffold up onto the roof and do that. We won't be paying for it because we had it done seven years ago. It's watertight, the whole property is watertight, which, touch wood, that continues. Um, the other thing is, as leaseholders, we've been paying for the repair of our own windows, just because it works out better like that. We can do it at the time when flats are empty or when we're doing our building work, and so that's not been necessarily a huge issue for us. But he did say that he wanted to redecorate the outside. So I said, you'd need to work with us very closely on that because we've been so used to doing our own things. We don't necessarily save up the money for sinking charge, although we know it would be coming. Um, we just normally say power wash the outside and that's fine for us. But the retail tenants on the ground floor are often a pain as well and they don't pay for anything. So that was one of my biggest concerns. I don't necessarily mind doing uh, an externals scaffold up, redecorate, make sure the woodwork is in good condition, check the down pipes, make sure that's all working. I'm not paying for the shop frontage because in their leases, it says that they have to redecorate that themselves every three years and their shops are terrible. The other thing is, is the common parts door to the entrance of the building isn't our responsibility, it's actually the local council's. It says that in our lease, so I wouldn't be paying for that either. So I just said to him, if you're going to do it, you need to be very, very careful with what you're charging for because we know what our responsibilities are and what they're not. And also that you work with us and you're not spending money unnecessarily because we do pride ourselves in keeping that building really well maintained, um, but it's on a road. And so the exhaust fumes every couple of years, we do get a lot of soot up and down, soot, pollution, whatever it is, up and down the front of that building. But we do have pigeon spikes to stop um, bird poo, clogging up our window sills and we do get out there as they say and repair our window sills because it's a grade two listed building we can't easily take windows out put them back in so we do a lot of repair on that building ourselves just to kind of maintain it and make sure that it's okay all in all though property manager was a really reasonable nice guy so I have nothing against him at all um, and I'm glad that he came and spoke to me but he did say Natasha I was thinking I was wandering into a building where nothing had been done I said no we look after this you know between the leaseholders and the common parts we make sure that everything is well maintained because we have pride in the building and that's worked well for a number of years so what I don't want him doing is jumping in there and saying actually do you know what um you guys aren't doing x y and z I said no you come over and you see a really really nicely maintained building so fab great that was a good meeting, although it lasted longer than I wanted to because he had me outside. He wanted me to look at the outside of the building, see if I agreed with things, what I didn't agree with. Um, 
I was a bit kind of like, you know, you could have this wander around yourself, but fine. I was there, I was able to do it. Um, then it's putting me a bit behind because it lasted until 2 p.m. I then had to go back inside and grab all of my Roku boxes and TVs and things and make sure that was sorted for my service accommodation. Next up, I had a viewing of a flat that I'm potentially going to buy. And I wanted to get in there and just do a film around. Um, but as I said previously, I needed to be back in the, I need to be back in the Cotswolds for roughly around 3.15. So I squashed everything in, like silly that I am sometimes. I've been trying to do too much. So I got into the flat that I potentially wanted to buy, have another look around. I've already been in there before. Just to make sure that I would be happy with having it as part of my property portfolio. Because I said earlier that I want to control the management in that building and have a little bit more of a say, and so having both flats would be really, really good for me, but actually I have to double check that I'm not just going on the fact that I want control over something and uh, whether it would be a good investment. But speaking to my broker, my mortgage broker, he has said to me, look, there's products out there for you, you would be able to get um, you'd be able to get lending on that pretty easily. Um, as I said previously, I spoke to the valuer who had already come in and said, you know, the slightly lower ceilings, does that affect value? No, okay, fab, so another thumbs up. The, that flat doesn't need much doing to it at all. Maybe a new shower, which is gonna cost me a couple of hundred pounds. You know, it's not a whole new bathroom redecoration. It's just making it look nice. Maybe um, I would furnish it a little bit because it's a top floor walk up. So you don't want tenants or whoever's going to be staying in there bringing huge amounts of um, furniture upstairs and damaging the walls. I don't want that. So I'd consider putting something up there. But apart from that, it's absolutely fine. Um, so there wouldn't be too much spending on it. And the thing is as well, I could get an 80% 80, 80 loan to value on this, get it at a discount and then pay off the... Um, pay down on the low to value very very quickly that would be my strategy here so everything is adding up on that flat I still haven't yet put in an offer but I think I definitely will um, and see what I can negotiate there but I do want to be sat back at my desk and do my proper deal analysis and I have time for that that's the good thing about buying that flat off market is I have time I uh, the seller has already said to me Natasha, I'll give you a week to go and have a look at everything. That's been more than enough. I've actually been dragging my heels a little bit because I've been running around doing meetings. Um, I have a wedding to go to this weekend, a family wedding to go to. So I haven't really been focused on it as much as I should or I would normally. But the minute I'm sat at my desk, I can make a decision on that. And I think it will be yes, but I'm going to try and negotiate a really, really good deal there of course keep you updated. But because it's off market, I really have to keep it off market. He doesn't want anybody knowing about it. So um, that's where I left that, but I was really pleased, really, really pleased with it. And then finally, had to sort everything out, pop it back in my service uh, accommodation, all of the TV boxes, make sure it was stocked with the wine glasses and make sure that it had uh, the shower curtains in it. It was all looking good. My only uh, uh, issue was that sometimes my cleaners don't put enough toilet roll in the bathroom and that gets my goat because I definitely need every single guest to have at least two full toilet roll rolls. That really is for me super, super, super important. I don't know why they don't do that. So I do update them and say, hey guys, you've not done this. But also then the broken TV, I couldn't sort out. So I just lifted it up and I thought I'd just put it in the back of my car. I'll take it back to my mum's house see if we can get it working there or I just buy a new TV for it at the time. But I don't want broken stuff in my service accommodation. I would rather they didn't have a TV in one of the bedrooms than have a broken one, which I then get complaints about. Instead, I switched it for a digital radio. All the other TV works um, and they all have Netflix and what have you. Because as you know from earlier in the podcast, I've just set that up and I've put that all there for them. Whew. So then that is a busy day of meetings, but let's do a bit of a celebration on that because I think sometimes I don't give myself enough credit for um, what I've just achieved. And I actually walked away from that day feeling like my head was spinning out of control. And that, wow, I didn't achieve what I wanted to. And mainly the only thing that I didn't achieve what I wanted to do was getting one TV working. Apart from that, Valuation agreed 
by the end of the, by the end of today I got my valuation agreed at the price that I had conservatively valued the property at and the surveyor said yeah fine you know we'll give you that valuation we're not arguing with it and I was like yes fab and I learned a bit about HMO valuations in Bath and the surrounding areas yes great for members club content because I'm piecing that together from other experts so that I can give that information fabulous I also um, spoke to the managing agents and I agree with the service charge, they know who I am, they know I'm pretty cooperative and I know that at some point over the next 12 months we are going to be looking at externals project. I can get saving for that and also I know what's going on, hurrah. I also have a new purchase in the pipeline because I decided that actually it's a good idea that we do pursue that and try and put in an offer and agree a fair price for it and I've got mortgage lenders on board amazing and earlier on in the week I found the money for the deposit and that's a different story for a different day um, but all of that came together nicely and as I've said before if it works and it flows and you can make it happen, it's usually a deal to go for. When it becomes really tough, like you can't get anything going, that's when deals become something that you might as well not even bother with. So always bear that in mind that if it's fine, it's not easy, but things seem to flow and there's a natural rhythm to it, fabulous. If it feels forced, hard, tough, no one's cooperating and it's not working and you're scrabbling around to find the money, probably best that you find a different deal might not be worth it for you so all in all oh and i went to my service accommodation and got everything ticked off it's looking good and i'm ready to do the development in january because i've looked at tile samples and i've got a schedule of works that i wanted to do i didn't even talk about that earlier oh natasha i didn't tell you i put together a schedule of works of everything that i wanted to do for my service accommodation so a new bathroom new doors um recessed TVs in the walls, I'm going to change some of the carpets and um, as well as that I am going to have my windows repaired as well. <gasps> I got that sorted too! It's amazing what I can do in a day. So <laughs> hopefully, this I know this podcast has been a bit of a scrabble together but it's a it's an insight into when I actually have a day, just fully, I block out my calendar, it's my day to go and do my property portfolio. Um, it started at uh, quarter to nine, and I got back to the Cotswolds by quarter past three as I diarised, and I did so much running around, and I met so many people, but I got so many things sorted. That is a day in the life of a property investor. Um, and what did I do at quarter past three? Well. My mum booked me into a haircut because she said that I'd not so I'd not sat down in weeks. She said that I run myself ragged too much. She was like, Natasha, go and get your haircut. Go and do something nice for yourself. And so, thank you, mum. I really, really appreciate that. Um, so there we have it. A day in my life as a property investor when I'm just focusing on property, my property portfolio. Now, as you know, I have so many different things going on all at once, but I do try and schedule days where I just do one thing at a time. And that's so important. And so that was my property day and I did, ach I did achieve a lot. And hey, I'll go put a TV in there at some other point. It's not desperate. I don't have guests getting on me and saying, Natasha, I'm missing a TV because there's two other TVs in the property which they can use. So I hope that's been a useful insight into me as a property investor what i do what i how i handle my property when i'm doing a day of property investing um, and there's no typical day that's not every single time i decide that i'm doing a property investment day that is that day and it changes it changes on a daily basis it changes on a weekly basis but that's an insight into what i do so if this podcast has been useful please let me know please comment or follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram and Twitter, I'm at Natasha C. Collins. If you want to talk to me on Facebook, head on over to my Property Investment Mastery Facebook group or come over to my website, ncrealestate.co.uk. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what you think um, and also how your day goes in comparison to mine because every day is very, very different. Right. Next week, I think I'll be back in the studio, but I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, again, please share the love, share this podcast around. If you enjoy it, let other people know because it really, really helps 
me it really really does so thank you for listening today i cannot wait to catch up with you again soon